right friends welcome back to questions and answers for 47th week look at the first question elections to american presidency were held for the first time in 1788-89 and please don't forget donald trump is the 45th president he is going to be 45th president and the elections held were 58th presidential elections and please don't forget for the first time presidential elections in united states of america were held in 1788 and 1789 and george washington was the first president of united states of america look at the next one amphibious rescue aircraft us2 this belongs to japan and please look into this picture this amphibious us2 aircraft can land both on water as well as on land so that's why it is called amphibious so the manufacturing company is from japan i am talking about companies where they are based in if you look at the howitzer m777 guns please look into this picture howitzer m777 guns these are manufactured by the firms in united states of america similarly usa firms manufacture this p8 poseidon so if someone talks about howitzer m777 as well as p8 poseidon at the same time chinook helicopters then apache helicopters these are all manufactured by the firms based in united states of america they may establish a joint venture with indian firms that is different story but these are the firms based in united states of america if you look at kamo 226t helicopters these are manufactured from russia and with the joint venture they are going to be manufactured in hindustan aeronautics limited in india that is different story but this kamo 226t helicopters are of russian origin similarly defense systems missile defense systems that is yes 400 triumph missile defense systems they also belongs to russia and ins chakra this is nuclear submarine taken on lease from russia so these things these three are from russia don't forget kamo 2260 helicopters this s400 triumph missile defense system at the same time ins chakra so these all belongs to russia and rafale fighter jets belongs to france and mirage 2000 fighter jets they are also belongs to france so this mirage as well as this rafale are manufactured by dassault aviation of france and now if you look at the kalashnikov weapons this kalashnikov weapons belongs to israel please don't forget looking to the next one facebook connectivity lab this has a set world record by transmitting at nearly 20 gbps for a length of 13.2 kilometers using mmw technology here the question is what is meant by mmw technology mmw technology is millimeter wave technology millimeter wave this millimeter wave or electromagnetic waves with the wavelength varying from 1 mm to 10 mm range and this millimeter wave technology is basically used for point to point transmission this is basically used for point to point transmission and mainly used for connecting internet service to distribution points but not for individual residential connections because it is uneconomical so if someone talks about mmw technology that is millimeter wave technology look into the next one the maiden flight of indigenously developed rustum 2 completed recently so if someone talks about rustum what is this project this project is for unmanned aerial vehicles these are popularly known as drones so this rustum 2 is unmanned aerial vehicle or a drone these are designed and developed 
by Bangalore based lab of DRDO and here production partners are Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Bharat Electronics Limited and it weighs 2 tons and this is medium altitude long endurance unmanned aerial vehicle and these are also known as Tapas 201. So, if someone talks about the Rustum or Tapas, these are unmanned aerial vehicles or drones jointly produced by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and Bharat Electronics Limited. Name the country which officially withdrawn from International Criminal Court. This is Russia. Why Russia is unhappy? Russia is unhappy because International Criminal Court recently declared that annexation of Crimea by Russia as armed conflict. Annexation of Crimea by Russia as armed conflict that was declared by International Criminal Court. And if you look at International Criminal Court, this is based in The Hague, Netherlands and it came into force in July 2002 based on Rome Statute. If someone talks about International Criminal Court, it is based on Rome Statute and almost 14 years passed and it brought to book only African nationals, right? African countries or African nationals are only charged under this Rome Statute or you can say International Criminal Court is sometimes considered as biased towards African countries and it is not looking at the offences or the war crimes committed by European countries or American countries. It is only concentrating and biased towards this African countries and several African countries recently expressed their wish to come out of International Criminal Court and International Criminal Court has got a jurisdiction to prosecute individuals for the international crimes of genocide. Genocide means totally wiping out one particular race or ethnic origin, then crimes against humanity and war crimes. And now Russia came out of it because recently International Criminal Court declared annexation of Crimea by Russia as armed conflict. Look into the next one. In the recently released 48th edition of top 500 list of supercomputers, Sunway Taihu Light won the fastest supercomputer title and this is for the 8th time that China retained the top slot in the list of world's fastest supercomputers and this is Sunway Taihu Light is built entirely by using processors designed and made in China that shows the technological progress made by China. To the next one, Vedaranyam is into the news. Why it is into the news? Because it is home to the world's first genetic garden of halophytes, first genetic garden in the world for halophytes. You may have a pertinent doubt, what is meant by halophyte? Halophytes are salt resistant or salt tolerant plants. Halophytes are salt tolerant plants. So, you can say world's first salt tolerant plants garden came up in Vedaranyam with the help of MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. Right? So, these plants, halophytes, can thrive and complete their life cycle in areas of high salt concentrations. Globally, they constitute only 2% of total terrestrial plant species. Right? So, please look into this slide. This is the location of a genetic garden of halophytes in Vedaranyam, coastal town of Tamil Nadu. Look into the next one. The highest denomination note ever printed by Reserve Bank of India was the rupees 10,000 note printed in 1938. So, rupees 10,000 note 
was printed in 1938. Please look at this specimen and slight history I have given here. This 10,000 notes for the first time printed in 1938 and demonetized in January 1946 but reissued in 1954 and again demonetized in January 1978. Look into the next one. Name the country which stated that it will phase out traditional coal-fired electricity by 2030. In fact, coal accounts for close to 10% of total Canada's greenhouse gas emissions and the purpose or goal of Canada is to move towards low carbon future. And here I would like to tell you one important aspect. Canada is the pioneer in carbon capture and storage technology. You see this picture here, the emissions coming out of coal based power plants, emissions coming out of coal based power plants will not come out. They will be captured and buried underground. That is known as carbon capture and storage. So, this is the power plant in Canada based on carbon capture storage. Look at the next one. More than 1200 homes have been raised in villages inhabited by Muslim Rohingyas. Rohingyas are the Muslims and they are inhabited in the Rakhine state of Myanmar. Please look into this picture. This is Rakhine state. This is home to Rohingya Muslims. And centuries ago, they are considered to be migrants from adjacent Bangladesh. Now, Rohingyas do not enjoy civilizational rights in Myanmar and they are being persecuted. They are facing a lot of discrimination and mistreatment. And Buddhist majority see Rohingyas as illegal migrants from Bangladesh. Right? So, if someone talks about Rohingyas, the country you should not forget is Myanmar. Look into the next one. At present, by using debit cards, the withdrawal limit of cash at the POS terminals at the merchant establishments is rupees 2000 a day. By using debit cards, you can withdraw up to rupees 2000 at the POS terminals. Right? Look into the next one. Government stated that a total of rupees 1452 crore was received by various voluntary organizations during 2014-15 under FCRA. What is FCRA? FCRA is Foreign Contribution Regulation Act. And in India, non-governmental organizations, they receive money from foreign donors that comes under Foreign Contribution Regulation Act or FCRA. Another important aspect is this is monitored by the Ministry of Home Affairs. Very important. Look at the next one. Serious Fraud Investigation Office is probing 390 companies for allegedly indulging in fraudulent activities. If company resorts to some cheating, then the organization which comes into picture is Serious Fraud Investigation Office. And this is Serious Fraud Investigation Office looks at fraudulent activities of companies and this is under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. And please don't forget, Minister for Corporate Affairs is Arun Jaitley, who is the Minister for Finance also. So, the Minister for Finance as well as Corporate Affairs is Arun Jaitley. And you should not forget another organization that is Financial Intelligence Unit. Financial Intelligence Unit comes into picture when there is a suspect financial transaction. Now demonetization is taking place. Demonetization of rupees 500 and rupees 1000 currency notes is already announced on November 8th. Now if any person deposits rupees 50 lakhs or rupees 1 crore in old notes, then that may be investigated by Financial Intelligence Unit. So, this is another important organization, Financial 
intelligence unit looks at suspect financial transactions and that is under the Ministry of Finance. Then India and Switzerland signed a joint declaration for automatic exchange of information or AEOI. So, from 2018 onwards, from 2018, that means for 2018 as well as the subsequent years, information of accounts held by Indian residents in Switzerland will be shared on automatic basis from September 2019. So, this will facilitate the identification of tax evaders and this automatic exchange of information we will have one capsule in future please view that if you want clear information heart of asia conference this is being held in amritsar amritsar is in punjab this is being held for the first time in our country and what is the purpose of heart of asia conference heart of asia conference is part of istanbul process the basic purpose of heart of asia conference is to ensure peace in Afghanistan because the peace in Afghanistan is very much essential for regional stability, right? So, this is part of Istanbul process. For the first time, this is held in India. 13th World Robo Olympiad was held in India. It was held in Greater Noida and this is held for the first time from 26th November to 27th November. And this is an event for science, technology and education. And here one important aspect is Team High Voltage from India won the silver medal in regular junior high category in 13th World Robo Olympiad. Two officials from SEBI were nominated as the chairpersons for two committees set up by IOSCO. And here I would like to tell you one important point. Bank for International Settlements or BIS, which is situated in Basel, Switzerland. That is the organization or you can say forum for various central banks. Various central banks are members of BIS and various policy issues with regard to banking system are discussed there. Similarly, SEBI is capital market regulator and various capital market regulators are members of IOSCO. IOSCO is the organization where several capital market regulators like SEBI are members and various policy decisions are made with regard to the regulation of capital markets and this organization IOSCO is International Organization of Securities Commissions and this is situated in Madrid, Spain, right? Safeguard duty was imposed on certain hot rolled flat steel products and the imposition of safeguard duty is done by the Ministry of Finance. Here, certain important aspects I would like to tell you, countervailing duty, then anti-dumping duty, safeguard duty, these three are WTO compliant. Finally, these three are imposed by Ministry of Finance, but the process is slightly different and the organization which looks at whether these duties are required or not, there are specific organizations are there and for countervailing duty as well as anti-dumping duty, the organization is Director General of Anti-Dumping and Allied Duties. This is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Similarly, for safeguard duty, this is Director General of Safeguards. This is under the Ministry of Finance. And finally, please don't forget, these three duties are finally imposed by Ministry of Finance. And this DGAD or this Director General of Safeguards, they investigate and they only recommend and this Director General of Anti-Dumping and Allied Duties, this is under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry and Directorate General of Safeguards is under the Ministry of Finance. Prime Minister led the foundation stone for AIMS at Batinda. This is one part and most important aspect is All India Institute of Medical Sciences are being established across the country under Pradhan Mantri Swast 
स्वास्थ्य सुरक्षा योजना दिस प्रधानमंत्री स्वास्थ्य सुरक्षा योजना स्टार्टेड इन द ईयर 2003 व्हाट इज द पर्पस द पर्पस इज टू मेक अवेलेबल हाई क्लास सुपर स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल्स लाइक एम्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री व्हाट यू कॉल रिलायबल टर्शरी हेल्थ केयर राइट फॉर सुपर स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल्स फॉर एडवांस्ड रिसर्च इन मेडिसिन this all india institute of medical sciences are being established and this is central government program pradhan mantri swasthya suraksha yojana this thing please don't forget the central government demonetized rupees 500 and rupees 1000 notes in exercise of powers conferred under section 26 sub section 2 of rbi act 1934 please remember this demonetization was done based on section 26 sub section 2 of rbi act 1934 after the demonetization akodra village came into focus please don't forget akodra was declared as india's first digital village in january 2015 this is in gujarat and this was developed by icici foundation and even small transactions are done via mobile in akodra village so if someone talks about akodra this is in gujarat and at the same time please don't forget mpsa is the most successful experiment in kenya india and israel they signed memorandum of understanding for cooperation in the field of water management and development and desalination is the main thrust area of this memorandum of understanding then look at the next one new chairman of tata steel is op but previously op but was the chairperson of sbi some time back and now he is appointed as a chairman of tata steel and the last one chancellor of nalanda university george u resigned and he belongs to singapore he was not happy with the way government superseded university's governing board without taking him into confidence he felt that the autonomy is being affected and visitor of nalanda university please don't forget president of our country is a visitor of nalanda university and recently chancellor resigned and nalanda this nalanda mahavihara was declared as world heritage site by unesco i am talking about old nalanda now nearer to that place new nalanda university is coming and i am talking about old nalanda it was declared as world heritage site that is one part and it flourished from 5th century to almost 12th century and it was a large buddhist monastery in the ancient kingdom of magadha right so these things don't forget and with this let us conclude questions and answers have a nice day and please do join for other capsules thank you